Tau Zero by Paul Anderson. So this book was copyright 1970 and it was the runner-up for the Hugo award-winning novel in 1971, getting beat out by Ringworld by Larry Nevin. Now I read this book uh, probably around 20 years ago and I remember really loving it. I remember most of the book but I didn't remember how it ended so while it was very familiar as I read through it the ending was kind of a surprise to me again and it's kind of shocking because the ending is pretty unique and I don't know why that didn't stick with me but Overall, this is an amazing book. This this book clocks in, I think, my copy is right under 200 pages. Depending on which copy you have, it'll probably be around 200 pages. And there's just so much packed into this book. It's pretty incredible. So let's just get right into kind of the plot outline of this book. So we're in kind of a near future from when Pohl wrote this book and... Earth is similar to what we see it today, but what's kind of unique is he had um, Sweden kind of as almost like a gatekeeper of humanity that a lot of issues between all these different countries kind of ran through Sweden based on a couple different reasons, but it was pretty interesting. He gets into that just a little bit in the beginning, but... Humanity is really trying to reach out into the stars at this time and colonize some other planets. So there's been some probes that were sent out and there's potential Earth-like planets that humanity wants to go check out. So they devise this kind of system of <clears throat> these spaceships that travel fairly fast, um, can maybe approach the speed of light and they're able to go out with a crew of 50. We have 25 male, 25 female, and they're going to go out to check on this planet and it will take them, I think it was around five years kind of to get there and check it out. And if it was worthy and humans could live on the surface, they just start a colony right there and, and set it up and they would never return to Earth. If it turned it turned out being a bust, that the planet wouldn't support life, they would turn around and come back. And I think the idea would be it would be about a 10 year journey. But when they came back, <clears throat> everyone on Earth would have aged 30 some years. So a big concept and theme in this book is the effects of time dilation. And I, I'm pretty familiar with the concept. Uh, the first time I ever heard about it was when I was a kid and I read some of the Enders games, especially in some of the sequels, it becomes kind of a big thing. And I've always been fascinated by this idea of time dilation. It's It's almost a way to travel forward in time, but it's still confusing. I mean, it still confuses me today. I looked up some more videos to see if there were some good explanations, and I'm gonna link one video down in the description that I thought did a pretty good job. There's videos that have way more views and way more subscribers, but this video I think did a really good job of kind of visualizing and explaining some of the effects of time dilation. And, you know, Einstein came up with this a long time ago, it was a theory, but now it's been completely proven through satellites we have in space, their clocks are off, through particle accelerators, we can test how certain elements decay, and when they're accelerated, the decaying time slows down. So it's completely true, as far as we know, that this effect would would happen um, during these long space voyages where where the vessel you're in is is going very fast. So, well, getting back to our plot, our crew we're on Earth and they're kind of we, out of the fifty people we have a, a small handful that we follow and one of them 
is the constable of the crew. He He's kind of in charge of just keeping morale and keeping everybody in check. He'll end up taking on kind of a larger role through the book, but he's one of the, probably the most central character. And then we have the captain and some other people aboard that the the novel focuses on. But they're on Earth and they're kind of coming to terms with possibly never returning back to Earth. Or if they do, the, their loved ones, everything they know is, is going to be older than when they left. And they're kind of grappling with this. And then we start off on our mission and we're heading out into space. And as they're kind of maybe at the midway point of their journey, something happens which completely throws the whole plan and everything for a loop. And so I don't really want to get into too much beyond that because I really love this book. I think everyone should give this one a shot and I don't really want to ruin anything beyond that. I, I think a lot of people know one of the main concepts. I'm not even going to bring that up. Something that happens when we have this kind of like malfunction or this issue that takes place. But, you know, this book is really heralded as a hard science fiction book. And I agree, Paul spends a lot of time in this 200 page novel talking about the physics of space, the physics and idea of time dilation, but it also, fo it's equally probably focused on the effects that it has on the crew. So we're in the heads of some of these crew members with all of these issues that they're going through, through this journey, even before this issue happens, they're still thinking about coming, possibly coming back to Earth with everything being different, you know, and they have like the science experiments they're supposed to be kind of working on on the journey to keep them busy. But even that, you know, you're in a ship, you're traveling through the cosmos, and there's a lot of uncertainty. And so, that aspect of the book is is done really really well so you have half of the book kind of this hard science fiction and then this other half is is the effects that is going that's happening to the the crew members so i think it's balanced really well and paul just did an amazing job on this book and let's just get into some pros and cons i guess so pros the the writing is is done really well for a 200 page book it's it's really amazing how much he was able to spend time on the science spend time on the characters and everything that they encounter after this anomaly kind of happens or this issue happens because i think we're at about not not quite halfway through the book when in this issue happens and what what kind of branches out or how we go off track in this encompasses this just immense scale and in in a little over 100 pages he he packs a lot into that so you just don't see that these days so much information and um you know plot really packed into such a tight novel and and it was just done really well. I, I wouldn't want this book really to be longer. I wouldn't want it to be shorter. I think it was perfect for, for what it is. The the effects of time dilation and the way he described it, I thought is a pro. I, I remember when I read this like 20 years ago, there was some things I didn't quite understand. Even now there's some some ideas here that you, I just don't quite understand. Some of it has to do with not only time dilation, time dilation affecting our the person's perceived time while they're traveling close to the speed of light, but also what it does to the mass of the ship or the people or anything around them. So it's just another concept that's really hard to wrap your head around, but. Paul addresses it in here. I don't know if it's 
the science completely holds up to this day, but it's, it's just done really well. And another thing is I'm talking a lot about hard science and he spends time talking about it, but I don't think you have to understand the concept to a T to enjoy this book. He's, he's putting it out there to ground this, I think, in some sort of real physics. But it's, it's really holding up the plot, and you can read this for the plot and just understand that, yeah, the, this might be an effect of traveling through space, but you don't have to know exactly all the inner workings of how it works. You can just accept it, read the book, and, and just enjoy it. So it's a really good balance. I think think if you're really into the hard science fiction, you'll you'll like it. And and even if you're just wanting to, to get your toes wet into some hard science fiction, this would probably be a really good book to start there because it doesn't get in the way too much of the plot. Now in, into some cons, there's, of course, when we look back and read these books that were written a while ago, there's some issues between the sexes and how they're portrayed. I don't think this book was horrible in my opinion, but the main character is a bit of an alpha male. It was kind of his role put on the, the ship. And I think it could be, some people could have issues with it, but for, for the books that came out in this era, I, I, I think this is a mild case of sexism or whatever you want to call it. So it, it, it didn't get into the, in the way of the book or really affect my reading enjoyment, I'll put it that way. <clears throat> Other than that, I can't really fault a lot. There is some, towards the end of the book, some of the science kind of goes off into uncharted, ter uncharted territory. Don't know if any of it is still accurate or if it holds up. Some of this stuff is, was, is speculation back then and it's still speculation now, so who knows, but the way he wrapped up the ending I thought was very satisfying and we'll just leave it at that. So I would recommend this book to pretty much anyone who who's read some science fiction and wants to maybe branch out into a little bit more of the hard science fiction. But know too that we are getting into the soft sciences as well too with the psychology of our astronauts and everything they're going through. So it's not all math and hard science thrown at you. It's balanced perfectly in my opinion. So it was just great, great on a reread. I, you know, some of these rereads I've thought about doing audiobooks, but this is, this is one I don't think I would ever enjoy as much in audiobook format. And that's just my opinion. The this, this took a long time for me to read. I, I kind of track my pages per hour sometimes just to see where I'm at. Usually I'm between 30 and 50 pages per hour. When I get into deep hard science fiction, it goes down towards the 30 page per hour rate. And when I'm reading something like Stephen King or fantasy or some of these bloated science fiction books. I can get up to about 50 pages an hour, but this one I think I was down to 20 pages an hour at times because I was just really trying to understand it as best as I could. So that's where we're at there. Paul Anderson, this is the only book I've read by him and I really liked it. I have some of his other science fiction. He's he's written this kind of big sprawling, loosely tied series. It has a weird name. I forget the name of it. And I have a few books in there that I'd like to read at some point. But I think the next book that I will read from Paul Anderson is more fantasy and it's called The Broken Sword. And I've heard a little bit about this from the fantasy community and from some things online. And it sounds real interesting. From what I can tell, it's, it's a bit on the dark side, but it's a short, um, you know, fantasy novel that he wrote. And I don't know when I'm going to get to that, but at some point, I think that might be the next book of Paul's that I, that I read. But the next book I'm going to read is Ira Levin's Rosemary's Baby. 
And this is another one in this series that I'm doing. And it kind of fits into this spooky season of October. So that's where we're at there. Look forward to a review on that coming up soon. And once again, thanks for watching.